Welcome back to 101 East. This week we are discussing the pros and cons of building hydroelectric dams in Laos. I'm joined in Bangkok by Pachamuto Ilangovan from the World Bank and Carl Middleton from the environmental group International Rivers. Welcome back, gentlemen. Carl Middleton, uh, in the last uh, part of the programme, we were talking specifically about the Nam Thung 2 project. It's kind of supposed to be a role model. Uh, what do you think it really uh, teaches uh, Laos society, stakeholders, about a future in which Laos says it wants to be a battery for the whole region? It's got several dam projects planned. We're not talking several dam projects. We're talking dozens of dam projects. And whilst Nam Tun Tu has raised the bar somewhat in Laos, the bar was set very low in, from previous projects. If we look at previous projects, people were, are worse off after them before. And subsequent projects too, the, the companies aren't even trying to meet the standards that Nam Tun Tu has set, let alone improve them. In the case of Nam Tun Tu, we've consistently seen that the environmental and social programs have not been prioritized within the project's development, such that when the project comes online in December this year, people living downstream of the project, that's 120,000 people, will not be ready for the impacts to their river, to the Zaybang Phi River and its, the impacts to its fisheries. So we can barely call this project a success. All right, do you deny that that is the case, Mr. Langovan? No, I don't think uh, Carl is correct in uh, making that uh, allegation that the environment and social programs are not prioritized. I mean, right from day one, when the World Bank and other partners got engaged, including the private sector developers as well as the government, uh, sustainability was easily the most defining uh, 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 criteria that was used. So environment and social uh, dimensions uh, of this project were in fact factored in from day one from the design stages. Yes, uh, like any other large mega complex project during implementation, you're like, you will have challenges in terms of startup delays and bringing in the right kind of measures in place. And that's what happened to the environment and uh, social program. So when you look at it, I mean, though the NT2 will start commissioning power at the end of the year, that's not the only timeline for the project. We are talking about a project that has a 25-year timeline mm. in which the resettlement program has a 12-year timeline, the downstream program has a nine-year timeline, the watershed management program has a 25-year timeline, and the revenue management program has a 25-year timeline. So we are in about the fifth year of the project. So you can see that here we still have uh, years to go. But I, as I mentioned, the project is directionally correct. And uh, as uh, Carl noted that you know, malnutrition is a huge problem. If you go now to the resettled areas, you can clearly see how healthy the children are. And nutrition is not a problem there. Interesting here to listen to you, Mr. Ilan Govan, and, and to hear that the World Bank putting itself in a situation where you have given us standards to hold you to. If you fail, it's going to be very difficult to hide uh, the fact, but that means also that you're very keen to show that this uh, model is working. I isn't there, though, um, a, a difficult reality, which is what leverage do you really have uh, with the other uh, partners in this, the electricity companies, um, the actual government of Laos, which really has a very poor human rights and corruption record. As much as Lot is riding for the Lao government on this project, so is for the World Bank and other international partners. Uh, certainly, I mean, past experiences from hydropower development or dam building has been taken note of. I mean, yes, uh, there has been criticism in the past. So this project essentially is taking on board uh, the lessons learned and also pushing the boundaries in terms of uh, uh, the kind of uh, solutions that it can offer. So yes, I mean, uh, the success of this project very much is going to determine the way hydropower industry as a whole is going to grow globally. Do you think that's the case, Carl Middleton, really, that it, it is going to determine the way that things go previously? Or are developers uh, so sort of hell-bent on getting these uh, projects to uh, fruition that politically it's going to be difficult to admit that there are real social and environmental costs? What we're witnessing in Laos at the moment is a hydropower boom where companies are essentially coming into the country on a first-come, first-served basis and signing contracts with the government to develop projects. There's no strategic planning happening. Now, it's not a question of not building any hydropower projects, but what we argue for is that there should be good process and that that process should be participatory and take account of local people's aspirations. And beyond that, that you should be starting small, like 
Building a large project like Namton 2 First just doesn't make sense with its high environmental and social costs. If smaller projects were developed first and the government could actually gain experience and then from that learn to develop the projects better, the hydropower potential isn't going anywhere and neither is the electric demand in the other countries. Uh, Mr. Ilan Govan, um, give us an idea of what goes on in a meeting room when you do have projects about Nam Thung 2 or any other uh, hydropower project um, proposals. Who is in the room? Are people really participating in it? Is there a good process or not, as Carl accuses? Yeah, Nam Thun Thu, in a sense, uh, very much revolutionized uh, the participatory processes in Laos. So currently, I think most projects are trying to kind of replicate what uh, happened in Nam Thun Thu in terms of involving the local communities. But when it uh, comes down to dis discussions uh, with uh, planners and dec decision makers, uh, the discussion is most about uh, uh, you know, what is the strategic direction of the country and what does it uh, uh, sort of grow into? I mean, yes, it's still a poor country, a third of the people are still uh, living in poverty. So what are the growth possibilities and where does uh, water resources stand in it? Obviously, uh, the argument uh, like World Bank puts forward is uh, any development of water resources has to be uh, sustainably and equitably done. So not only the current generations, future generations also benefit. And at the end of the day, what matters here is how much allow people can benefit from this uh, development and what development dividends uh, they will get over the long term. And that's not going to be known uh, for, uh, for many years yet, as you, as you pointed out. We don't have very much time left, but Carl Middleton, I wanted to ask you, when, when you go to the People's Democratic Republic of Laos and you talk to people in this region or people from your organization, um, what do they actually say to you? Are, are they convinced by these kind of arguments that the World Bank, that the Lao government is making? I mean, they do want a way out of poverty. Sure. I mean, the important question to ask here is what are the best options and the best solutions? Like, the United Nations Development Program has identified that you need, for human well-being, you need to have sustainable livelihoods and sustainable incomes. And hydropower projects take resources, like they, and they provide it, it's a very capital-intensive process. It doesn't really provide, um, it doesn't provide the types of, it, it generates economic income, but it doesn't create mass employment, for example, and it doesn't invest in sustainable agriculture. So these are the types of solutions that the Lao government and the World Bank and other development partners need to be talking about more seriously, rather than just uh, pushing hydropower development and other types of extractives like the mining industry and plantations. This is the type of development that would bring sustainable development to Lao. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have this week. My thanks to my guests, Pachamutu Ilangovan of the World Bank and Carl Middleton of International Rivers for talking about what is a very underreported issue. From all the 101 East team, thank you for watching.